Hello and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me in today's video. And as you can see, I am not in a light aircraft. That is a bit of a shock. Normally I'm just flying light aircraft whenever I fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that is because I've managed to get myself a little bit of time during the daytime to be able to record this. So this is going to be a flight with live weather. We are going from Echo Golf Bravo Bravo, Birmingham Airport in the UK, over to Echo Delta Delta Lima, Dusseldorf in Germany. This should be a two-part video with the flights lasting perhaps each leg or each, each part of the video being about 45 minutes to an hour long. Now, I'm flying the BAE 146 Professional by Just Flight. This, this one in particular is the 146-200. Uh, in the British Airways Express livery, which you will see a little later on. I have done all the pre-flight checklists, so passengers are loaded, fuel is on board, cargo is on board, uh, APU is running, batteries are started, all the checks have been completed, and after the intro I will be going through the before start checklist, starting the engine, taxiing, taking off, and getting a climb out. Weather is not too bad, uh, today, at least, I think it's not too bad. Uh, it's very slight crosswind across the runway, I believe, and landing in Dusseldorf, it does seem like fairly calm winds. I think my biggest problem is going to be using my rudder pedals, if I am to be completely honest. Uh, that is probably what is going to trip me up, so I'm going to try to avoid any excessive movement with the rudder pedals, but if it happens, well, I'm going all over the runway, just before, uh, before warned. I think that is everything that I need to say. Uh, of course, if you do like the video, please click on the like button and all of those, uh, all of that standard YouTube spiel. Uh, I'm not going to go through any of that. So make sure you stay tuned. Let's get started and let me see if I can fly a 146. Alright, before I start, before I go through the before takeoff checklist, I'm just going to set this to the runway heading that I want. We are taking off runway 33 today, which has actually has a heading of 326, which is a bit weird. Um, magnetic magnetic uh, deviation and all of that. 110.1 is the ILS frequency for runway 33. Flight directors are on. I can probably put this into on. Uh, initial altitude will be selected. Uh, I'm going to go 6,000 feet, although to be completely honest, I will probably be hand flying at 6,000 feet and then climbing up to our flight level today, which is going to be 21,000 feet. Flight level 210. Setting the altimeters, we have altimeters at 1024 currently. That is the barometric pressure in Birmingham, or for those of you who work in inches of mercury, 3024, 30.24. That probably needs to go in, probably should be switched off for now. There we go. Outside air temperature is currently about 17 degrees Celsius, so icing conditions have not been met. Therefore, I do not need to worry too much about anti-ice until I am fairly high up. Visible moisture, I do not see many clouds, a little hazy perhaps. Aside from that, everything looks alright. So that is the departure briefing, I suppose. Uh, we will be taking the, in fact, I might as well show you. The SID will be the ungap one mic on after departure. So we'll be using RNAV mode with this aircraft using the FMC. Uh, I will be hand flying the aircraft until we get around here up to uh, Bravo, Bravo, Bravo Bravo Echo 2-1. Hopefully we should be at 6,000 feet by that time. And then from there I am actually going to um, just allow the climb. I'm going to say we will be cleared for the climb up to our airway on the way to Ungap. So that is the plan. Uh, I'll probably put heading hold in once we are at 135 and then I will activate our nav navigation. 
So just make sure that that is on nav, otherwise I'm not going to be able to do such a thing. Uh, flight uh, V speed today. We're going to be taking off flaps 18, so I'll click that. Uh, that means that our rotation speed is 1 to 1, um, which also means that our V1 is probably about 1 to 1 in this particular aircraft. So, 1 to 1, nice slow rotation. VTF, uh, VFTO is 172 and VER is 182, so I'll be bringing the flaps in at 172 knots. That is that. Everything else appears to be set. I'm probably missing something. It has been such a long time since I've flown this aircraft, but uh, hopefully nothing too, uh, too major. Parking brake has been set. Thrust levers are all are at fuel cutoff. Hydraulics are all off. Fuel tanks. I'm going to switch all the fuel tanks now on. Cross feed is shut. Standby pumps are on normal. Uh, transfer is currently at shut. I should probably put that to automatic. There we go. A uh, fasten seatbelt sign can now go on. Uh, pressurization has been set to what I want it to be. So we are flight level 210. So that will give us a pressurization of about 3,700 feet. Not really something to, to currently worry about. Ice detect switch needs to go on. That always goes on on this aircraft before we are up and away. Just in case we do run into ice on the way up, it will light up on the MWS the master, uh, with the master warning system. Uh, Anti-ice for all of these need to, need to be on as well. So that is a little strange, I suppose, but that is the before start checklist or engine start itself. APU air goes off, packs go off, um, and then what I could do is if I start a pushback right now, I can push, I can get the aircraft to push back, chocks are gone. Let's get that to push back. Parking brake released. And we'll just line the aircraft up on the taxiway whilst I'm looking for all of all of this. So engine start power normal, start master needs to go on. We'll start engine four first. And I'm fairly happy with that. So I'm just going to go to engine start. That looks good enough. It's not exactly the best spot, but it is good enough. Uh, I need to do that. Okay, that engine is now going on. I could actually get this to then push me forward a little while engine four is starting. Engine 4 is started, I'm now going to go for engine 1. Come on. Takes a little while, it's a, it's, it has a bit of a, a laggy response at times to, to flight controls. Parking brakes are on, that is gone. N2 is up, did not mean to do that. Engine 1 is coming up. So we're just going to go through all, all four engines. Just take a quick look outside. Um, I'll do that after engine 2. So start operating. Is it actually... help if I did that I think I think I accidentally clicked down to motor instead of start although that is interesting as to what it does 
There we go. Go through engine two. Just waiting for that to go rise above 10, 12%. Apparently I have a co-pilot. This is the co-pilot. Hello. And whilst engine two is coming online, let me go ahead and take a look outside. Here's our aircraft, parked up nicely, ready to go. Get a nice, decent shot of that. You can actually hear the engine starting up. There we go, that can be the thumbnail. That engine is started, so one more engine to go. I'm just going to go in and start the final engine, which is engine three. Engine start. Again, just waiting for the N2 percentage to rise to a reasonable level, which is about 12-15%, which it now has, engine 3, and now have fuel going. Alright, all four engines are now started, uh, just waiting for the start procedure to, to complete before I set up the overhead panel ready for everything else. Um, what else needs to be done, let me think. Uh, taxi lights need to probably go on, although for some reason my taxi lights do not work. I can only switch on landing lights. Um, that is not a that is not a bug with the aircraft, that is a bug I believe with my controls. Right, starters are good, set that to off. Start master switch can go off. Continuous ignition is not needed, this is not a wet runway, so we are all right there. Uh, piezo heat can go on, and screen heaters can also now go on. Uh, hydraulic pumps need to go on, and generators need to go on, so generator... In fact, if I do this from here, this will be easier. Uh, pumps, so generators 1 and 4 are on. Pumps are on, brake fans go to automatic. Uh, anything else? PTU needs to go on, AC pump needs to go to automatic. And then from there, uh, let's see, down to this. Uh, packs can go on again, APU air can go on, and all the engine air currently is going to remain off until we are in the air. Anti ice not needed. Uh, and that looks, I believe, that looks pretty much as ready as we are going to be for now. It says intake low pressure, that is because we are sitting at idle currently. So that is fine. Set this back on. Set that to takeoff power. That looks all right. Uh, I'll set the transponder right now to TARA. Reason being is that being single pilot operations, it is a little bit more uh, difficult to to do such a thing. I think at that point we are fairly all right. So next up, let's head to the runway. Not sure why those things are flashing, but um, why are they flashing? Ah, they're fine. Release the brakes. 17 degrees Celsius outside. And let the engines just slowly, just a little bit of movement, a little bit of throttle required for these. There we are. Check the rudders. Full movement. Yep. Uh, 
and I will also set this set that view zoom out a little that's nose wheel steering right there and switch on head tracking just making sure my rudders are working all right because I think last time last time I played my rudders were being a little bit annoying I've made some adjustments to the rudder pedals uh, should we run all the way down to the end no that is actually not to a runway is it this is the runway uh, there is a displaced threshold there but I think I have the ability to take off on this runway I do not need the extra do not need the extra space I do not think windsock is showing very light winds coming in across the runway so I'll just line up very easily not quite straight so I'm just going to straighten this up there we go that looks good parking brake set let's do the before takeoff checklist I know I'm not supposed to be doing this right here but altitude armed uh, set heading one uh, let's see one th three one two three four five one three five set flaps down to 18 for takeoff which I probably could have done on on the taxiway but I'm just doing it here uh, transponder is set and I think I am good for takeoff so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this chart bring up the aircraft on the chart zoom in a little to the chart so that I can see it relatively clearly Maybe move the chart up there it's much easier less movement for me to be able to look at the chart uh, 1.8 nautical miles and then turn 102 just go all the way around looks like a, a 30 degree turn 30 degree bank s slightly easing into a 15 degree bank up to 135 that is fine all the legs appear to be fine for me good I think we are good to go if I do release the parking brake config check all clear let's throttle this aircraft up Please take the seat. TMS sets takeoff. Said so hopefully this very light wind causes me Speed zero to no issues. Eighty knots was checked. Checked. Power set. End. Gear up. Smooth takeoff. Still not quite as I want it to be when it comes to. I think my trim is slightly out, but not nothing too too severe. Get ourselves up to one thousand five hundred feet with a ten degree rate of climb small amount of turbulence nothing to worry about and 
begin the turn. Actually, a bit more than a small amount of turbulence here. That's all right, though. Just got to settle the aircraft. I was not expecting quite this much turbulence, but I will now drop my nose ever so slightly. As we work our way around, doesn't matter the bank, doesn't matter at the moment as I am just hand flying. There we go, settled, but not fully settled, but it has settled somewhat. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to straighten the aircraft up here. as we get to 5,000 feet. Set my flight altitude now to flight level 210. There it is. And we're slightly off where we need to be, but not too far. And what I will now do is set a heading slightly away from where I need to be and uh, the FTO safe on speed taps up there we go I think I am going to just continue the climb out here switch this to RNAV now is better. Funnily enough, the aircraft is flying a little bit better now. Autopilot can go in. Just turn the aircraft a little bit to a heading of 120. Continue the climb. The vertical speed. let the aircraft do what it needs to do. We're coming up to 250 knots, so I'm going to have to ease off a little on the climb thrust. And increase the rate of climb. There we go. RNAV, uh, sorry, RNAV, LNAV, we should just turn in. And we are, we are clear. We're doing what we should be doing. Climbing as we should be climbing. And that was not, that was not too bad. I see no real, there's a, there's a tiny little cloud shelf up ahead, but there is, I see no real visible, visible moisture anywhere. Ice detector has not picked anything up, so that is fine. Uh, I'll leave the engine anti-ice on regardless. I can now go ahead and switch on packs there, switch on engine air, switch off APU air, and probably stop bringing in recirculation, bring those reset valves on. I mean, fresh air from up here will be a little cold, I would say. Um, going up to this, I think PTU needs to go off, AC pump needs to go to automatic, uh, and I think that is everything for the after takeoff. Um, no ice in condition, so continuous ignition is not required, anti ice is not required, TMS mode can now go to sync. As we are now turning, so if I bring up the Navigraph, you should see where we are going. It's going to say, oh, you've got a new flight plan loaded, would you like to load it? Oop. 
Every time Navigraph loads its status, Oh, this is a weird flight plan. What has gone on here? So that is the plan we are on. That one there. It appears to have just drawn a direct line for some reason. Ungat, and now we're going to be joining... It's not that one there, we are joining this P155. So for some reason that has not worked uh, quite as well. I could, I could in theory unload this one and load up uh, that one. No? No, that isn't the one. Not the MSFS one. There we go. That one. That should give me what I want. There we are. That is the group that we're on. Okay. Uh, over 12,000 feet now, I suppose landing lights can go off and I will actually start pushing the climb a little. Let's start giving ourselves some extra speed now. Probably want to try and maintain on the indicated airspeed just over 250 today if possible. Start bumping this up. So it was a very gentle takeoff, which is great. It should be a very gentle landing as well, in theory. Um, but you never know. You just never know. My rudders definitely appear to be working better, though. So that was a, that is a good thing. I suppose I should probably now set this to 1013 again if I was not single pilot I could do all of this quite easily um, or if I wasn't hand flying a lot of this this is cold now up here but there are, well, no, well, there are some clouds over there so there's some moisture I'm considering switching on the anti -air. Should we take a look outside? Let's take a look outside for a bit. There it is. What's a nice view? What's a nice view? I should probably switch head tracking off as well at this point. Because I think it is unnecessary and needed. So let's go ahead and switch that off. Gives us a much better ability to look around. So I think that is. I have no idea what that time is actually. I'm trying to recognise any of the roads. Is that the Cambridge? Uh, potential. There's the river. That could be Cambridge. But I'm not sure. No, it cannot be Cambridge, surely. We're not in that area, are we? Oh, we would be heading to that area. It is a bit of a hazy day, and, and I have to say, Microsoft Flight Simulator has really improved the way things are ending. So I have to I have to give them credit where credit is due. Definitely definitely uh, renders things a, a lot a lot more nicely than it used to. Let's go inside. A couple of other things that I need to do and one of them is going to be to switch the APU off because it is no longer required. So why waste the extra fuel on the APU? And I think it should be alright. Yeah, that was just a quick warning for electrics. 
but we are we're completely all right we're still climbing but we are almost at and that might be Cambridge that might be Cambridge because that's the wash or that no, that's Cambridge what is that one can I pick up a map apparently not can I pick up a map from Navigraph oh wait no something's loading uh, no, dismiss that. It's just taking its time. But we'll just load faster. Where am I? There. That was Corby. No, that's Corby over there. So if that's Corby, Daventry, that's Northampton. That's Northampton. And that is Cambridge. Up there, I believe. Well, Pete, that's Peterborough. Okay, Peterborough. So Cambridge is below us. So that that is Peterborough. We just went over Northampton. Cambridge should be over to that side. So I was I was going to say I wonder if that area that we, we just went past was Kettering. But I wasn't sure. The, rec the reason being is I thought I recognised uh, the A6 area, having driven down that A6, A14, all of that area. So that's Peterborough. So the A47 is that road there, probably. And then we've got the A1 coming down, which goes into London, or goes up towards, so it just follows along this way, up towards Edinburgh, through Newcastle. Oh, the map is loading. How nice. We are at our cruise altitude. And there are some wisps of cloud that we are having to go over. If I press plus, we're looking at it, we just ruined it. Okay, it's a bit slow. OpenTopoMap.org, a little bit slow. This area is actually an area of depression, it's below sea level part of this. thing that um, I could potentially do is ease off on the throttle, that's one thing, because now we are at our cruise heights, so I can ease off. Now I'm trying to figure out what an ideal cruise speed will be, or cruise speed, or more specifically cruise power, 88, 87, we're still climbing, there we go, that appears to have stabilised, let's try, let's try that cruise power, as we go, go over some clouds and into some cloud area. All, all is well at the moment. Now in the next video I will be planning up... Um, I need to get this map, it's just useless. In the next video I will be planning up my approach. Where are we turning? Where are we turning? And why are we turning? Still need to slow down and touch, I think. Let's ease off a little bit more. We're getting close to our overspeed, and I'm not entirely keen on that. So I'll just ease off a little bit more. 83. In fact, you can hear some of the clunking just as we get close to that overspeed. We're certainly not in the overspeed area, just close to it. And obviously with the ground speed, it is quite a bit. There we go. I think that should be alright. 
432 knots over the ground is, is pretty it's pretty good. Have another quick look outside with the clouds around. Maybe we might be able to get some more realistic shots here. If it manages to focus on the aircraft, it does. But it doesn't look quite as good. Though, though it's more, though it looks more realistic, it doesn't look quite as um, quite as fancy, does it? Maybe it looks a little bit more fancy from the front. Maybe a shot something like that. No, that doesn't look that fancy either. There's the livery, by the way. I did, I did mention that earlier, that we had this show as expressive. I'm not sure if I mentioned it was a Land Rover livery. And I am flying a 200, 146-200, as opposed to a 300, which I flew last time. Okay, I'm fairly content with the speed at present. This is, this is alright, so 250 to 280, I think, indicated airspeed is what I should be targeting. All in all, everything seems reasonable. Now what I might do is if I if I can I will add replays from passenger cabins and all of that sort of stuff if it is possible for me to do so I have not really ever tried to do replay cameras in Microsoft Flight Simulator properly. Um, I have no idea whether it will work or not, whether it saves various different states of aircraft or anything uh, along those lines. So I will try and if it works, great. If it does not, you may not see. You may not see all of it. Although, having said that, if it does work, you would probably have already seen it because I, I would have had it for the takeoff or something like that. It was a little bit turbulent on takeoff. Oh, it was just that little bit turbulent. Now, for now, though, I really have very little that I need to do. Just monitor the speed, uh, monitor the flights, monitor, make sure everything is moving around as, as it should. I'm not using auto throttle. It has a very rudimentary auto throttle system, which is this. Uh, really, it's not an auto throttle. It's a thrust management system. Um, so it just it just manages. You, you set a you set the bug, and it will just keep things at at that particular point. So, for example, six six four, six six five. This is probably good. Eighty one percent. That is. If, so if I move these bugs in. Ooh, What's on earth? Just hit a pocket of turbulence. It's a good thing the fast and seatbelt sign is still on. Probably switch that off for now. So I've, had, I've had it on for what 20 minutes, but I think they can they can switch. They can wander around the cabin, it doesn't look too bad up here. But yes, as I was saying, I just pop that down, press uh, one of these. TGT will try to hit those figures. Um, not sure how to select the N1 one. I think it's MCT maybe. And then the TO take off, and then if I press descent, it'll go into a descent mode uh, and try to hit certain figures there. If I have these. Uh, different speed holes also present. Slowing down a little bit more than I would want, so I'm going to bump up the throttle a few percent. 
as we get over the coast of England. So, so Norwich, Great Yarmouth and all of that, that way. And then out that way, that's uh, Essex, the River Thames, the Thames Estuary just there. And then we've got Colchester, uh, Ipswich, and all of that out that way. And that's the English Channel on that side, North Sea on this side. We'll be crossing over, it will only be about 10 minutes, I think 10 minutes over the, over the sea. Something, something along those lines. So not too much of an issue. Uh, sitting at 250, the reason I'm hitting 250 knots, 280 knots, if I remember correctly from reading the manual, that is the or the ideal long range. I think that's the, the ideal speed for long range uh, use now. Realistically, I guess it doesn't matter. The whole long range thing does does not really matter, but still. So, let me see. The only thing I'm, I am concerned about with the, with the replays is, is it going to continue using fuel, or is it going to know that this is a replay? That is what I'm going to be concerned about. In fact, custom toolbar, toolbar, I think I should be able to, there's replay. Apparently I cannot... Really? Okay, apparently I cannot switch that route now. I do have another replay being recorded. I'm just concerned about the whole fuel situation. Because will I have to start the aircraft up again, get it back to that state, so that I can run the replay? I have no idea. What I am going to do, though, at this point is I think I'm going to end this video because we are so if we look on Navigraph we are going to be leaving the London centre terminal area though I'm not using uh, ATC and we will be moving over to I just missed that Amsterdam centre there we go so the aircraft is just here there it is and so at Redford, we'll be moving, swapping over from London Centre to Amsterdam Centre, and then we will be coming in here. And I've got to start working out the whole descent, uh, descent and landing into Dusseldorf. So, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to click the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Leave a comment in the comments box below, letting me know what you think. Don't forget to. Uh, don't forget to support me on Patreon if you can do so. Link in the description box below. And if you do have tips for flying this aircraft, do let me know. Because, as I've mentioned before, I'm not exactly the most uh, knowledgeable with this aircraft. I've barely flown it. So, if there are tips, things that I have missed, then do let me know. Uh, that would be, it would be quite useful. Uh, you can also find me on social media. We've got links in the description box below for Discord server and any social media that I still use or have or might use in the future. Who knows? Uh, I think I am going to be going into ice conditions. I can also see the Netherlands. That is all from me, and I will see you next time in Microsoft Flight Simulator.